Good evening and welcome to On The Spot. I'm Flavia Tumsime Kabura. The big conversation on everybody's mind is the NSSF uh, fund. I'm putting my money in there. What then happens to it? Tax, tax exempt. Now it will be exempt, exempt tax. I don't understand that you've said. Well, we're here to say that uh, the law that was enacted in 1985, they said there's some gaps that have been identified. They need to be changed. What are those gaps? The discussion is with the NSSF Managing Director, Richard Biarugawa. Good evening. Good evening, Flavio. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like you and I already had a conversation. I was starting to understand, and then we had to go on air. So I'm hoping just as easily as you were explaining it to me, we'll do for the viewer. So let's start with the fact that this is happening. There's amendments. Amendments means we've looked at what is here, and we need to make some changes because it doesn't apply anymore. Um, Flavia, um, a little bit of context. I'm sure you know this already, that the NSSF Act uh, CAP 2222, I don't know what that means, but uh, the lawyers say that, uh, was enacted by Parliament in 1985. Yeah. In 1985, the employment scene was different. Uh, at the time, the biggest employers were parastatals mm -hmm. outside of government. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of informal businesses. Uh, there were still large cooperatives that were running at the time. Uh, employment, as I said, was organized around large institutions. Mm -hmm. And as you know, today that is different. Yeah. Uh, manufacturing is, is not um, hiring as many people. Um, services are the biggest growth. There's a lot of informal businesses, but there are also SMEs, you know, the, the, the term SMEs. Yes. Um, people are living longer. Uh, people have different lifestyles, things have changed. So for a very long time, our members have said, look, you know, we register with you when we are 25, we leave you when we are 55, or you, are, you insist that we leave you when you are 55, and yet, you know, what do I do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. So we feel that one of the things that this law is going to do is to basically help us deal with the changes that have happened in the labor law. Okay. Uh, in the labor situation, uh, the things that have led to people living longer, people, uh, things that have led to people being more enlightened, people saving for their lives and preparing for their retirement, okay. and basically giving them a good life once they finish working. All right. So that's what this whole bill is about. So some of the things that we're going to probably break down for people, the reason for uh, you know behind this bill, one is to expand social security coverage, yes. the other is to include um, making contributions mandatory hmm. you smile at that because yes informal and formal sector workers because you were saying it has changed we yeah. now have smes plenty of smes plenty in of the SMEs, business yeah. uh, unregistered businesses that you would rather they do make this contribution yes. so let's break down from social security coverage not enough people are, you have 2.5 million okay so let's start off with the numbers it's nice to start off with the numbers mm -hmm. they're about 19 million i think the numbers have recently been revised by the uh, you boss, I think, mm -hmm. uh, the people who re do the numbers. So they say there's about 19 million individuals who are capable of working. Mm -hmm. Of those, 5 million are in the formal sector. That means that there's about 14 million who are in the informal sector. Now, within the formal sector, 2.5 million are registered with NSSF. It doesn't mean they are contributing, it, but registered. it means they are registered. Mm -hmm. So they've contributed, maybe they've contributed once, twice, a couple of years mm -hmm. and they've stopped or they've registered and they are hoping to be employed but we've got about 2.5 million mm -hmm. right so is, is it i register i have a job i move in between jobs and yes. there's no so, contribution so, so you continue to contribute or if you go to an employer who is who doesn't meet the threshold then you there's stop a gap. yeah mm -hmm. or then you or you go into your own employment and, and you choose don't to still contribute and you still or contribute not. or not yeah mm -hmm. which is what we would call the voluntary anyway okay. that's 2.5 million Active, if you wanted to be really strict, about 800,000, okay? Now, um, include there those who work for government, it's about half a million. Mm -hmm. So that's three million people of the formal who have a pension scheme, either of NSSF or of, of government. Mm -hmm. Now, that leaves you two million within the formal sector who are not registered, who are not contributing to a scheme, and most of the time, those present two problems. Mm -hmm. One they are part of a company that has less than five individuals. Yes. So they shouldn't be registering for NSSF mandatory. They only should be doing it voluntary. Mm -hmm. So that's one category. The second category are those who 
are non-compliant. In other words, they are over five, mm -hmm. but they hide that fact away from us. Yes. At that moment, that number is about 20% of our uh, customer portfolio, wow. all right? 20% represent the non-compliant mm -hmm. customers. So let's move forward. Then you've got the bigger chunk, the 14 million, who work for the informal sector or who work for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, those individuals don't have a scheme, or if they have a scheme, uh, it's not registered with, with us or with the uh, Ubra. Mm -hmm. uh, or they obviously do their savings in chickens, cattle, land, mm -hmm. uh, land, buildings, and all those things. So you're operating on believing they don't have a retirement plan. They don't have a retirement mm -hmm. plan. So that is the situation at, the, at this stage. So you can see that there is a huge population that really is not covered. And these individuals deserve a social security by the time they finish working because most people don't realize that by the time they are age 55, by the time they are age 60, mm -hmm. by the time they are age 70, they won't have any other source of income apart from a scheme where they put in some money. In fact, the numbers show that of the people who invest with us, only sorry 90% of the people who come to get their money don't have any other form of saving apart from NSSF. So it's a dire situation. It, it really is, is, is a dire situation. Okay. So the reason we believe that the changes that are coming are going to help in coverage is because A, they reduce the threshold for the individual companies that so that everybody who has an income can save with NSSF. Explain that to me because what does that mean? I, it I basically have a company, means that I don't have a company. I can so in the to? past, the NSSF Act said, if you had five individuals five more, yes. working for you, then you must register for NSSF. Yes. Now, the law will say, even if you have only one individual, you must register for NSSF. Okay. So long as your business is formal, it's been registered. Underlining must? Yes, must. Obviously, it's must, but it doesn't mean that they always do it okay. because it says must. Mm. So that's the first change. So we hope mm -hmm. that that will trap the two million or so people I told you mm -hmm. that are currently in formal employment but are not registered with NSSF. So the contributions, five or more people, um, I mean, as we see it, it's uh, my 5% and mm -hmm. NTV then gives the 10%. That's correct. Now, for, for me, who's me and me in the company, what then happens? Well, what then happens is that you can choose, and the law now will allow you to do yes. that, to voluntarily make more contributions okay. but we'll come to that Is because that that's part of the tax <laughs> Situation right. because yes. I let's first talk a little bit about the coverage no, yes, I and how that is going to improve. Okay, so you're saying that even if you have less than five people in your company, it yes. could be just you or you and your brother, you and your friend, just two people. You yes. can still, you must now contribute to NSSF. You must now contribute. All to right, NSSF. so that's one way. That that's you'll that's one way that we're going to increase this coverage. Coverage, right. yes. The second way we're going to increase coverage is through tax incentives, mm -hmm. right? Forget about the tax incentives for those who are already contributing because we're going okay. to talk about that. All right. But let's talk about the new people who we want to contribute. Yes. So what's the tax incentive? The tax incentive is that we will allow you at least 30% of your income mm -hmm. to be uh, deductible or allowable for tax in order for that income to come to us as a social security contribution. Okay. Okay, so... If you had a million shillings as income, all right, today 30% of that goes away and therefore you have to pay 300,000, yes. all right? However, if you were allowed a 30% allowance mm -hmm. on your pay as you earn, that means that you would deduct 300,000 yes. from your salary and then we would only charge, or URA would charge you tax of only 30% on 700,000 okay. in order to pay to, to, you, to, to them NSSF. and then the 300,000 would then come to, to us NSSF. as a contribution. Okay. So basically allowing you to have a bigger chunk of, of your money. income mm. av available for you to invest for the future. Okay. And of course, you know, the trick is that, not the, not the trick, well. but the, the, the other side is that once we've invested it for you and we've given it to you back at 55, then that money would be taxed. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the the give and take that the URA is doing. But okay. it will also increase coverage. So tax incentives. So that's the first one, tax incentive. The second one, right, which is, is quite important, is to do with the products, mm -hmm. okay? 
So for a long time, we only had literally three products uh, for our members. The first product we were able to give is the age benefit, which basically means run the full mile of 55 years and we'll give you your money after 55. Yes. No questions asked, all right? Or get to the age of 50 and you're out of employment for, for one year, yes. then you get your money. So that is to do with age. The second product we had was to do with invalidity. In other words, you are unable to work uh, or have huge bills or there's a major operation for you to undertake, mm -hmm. you are allowed to remove part of your money or all of your money in order to help you sort out that medical problem. Okay. And if you recover fully and are able to work again, you can then, then you can back. continue and contribute. Okay. All right? So that's the second product we had. The third product we had, which is the unfortunate one, is when you die mm -hmm. or when you pass on. The funds that have been accumulated in your account are then available to the next of kin or Spouse, are as, a, children. Yes, as mm -hmm. a survivor's benefit, right? Those were really the three products that we had. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was the other two products, which is the immigration grant yes. and the uh, exempted employment, which is basically getting Police another scheme. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if, if you went to government, you could withdraw your money. Mm -hmm. Or if you went abroad and you were working for a company which the minister has exempted, you can claim your money. Okay. Or if you went abroad and immigrated, got a green card and went mm -hmm. to the States with your family, then you were allowed to withdraw. So, so this is what we've had. Yeah, that's what we've had. Yes. And for a long time, it meant that in between, we didn't have anything. So what this law is doing is it's going to bring in products, okay? So the minister to, uh, will be able to authorize new products as recommended by the board and, of course, management. So mm -hmm. we will be able to come up with new products. And we've already thought about some of the things we might be able to do. For example, the one that comes to my mind is things like housing. All right. Mm -hmm. So have an account whereby you accumulate sufficient money and you remove that, put it into a mortgage or So pay my for a mortgage. NSSF benefits could pay for a mortgage. Could pay for your mortgage. There's a little catch. I will yeah, talk about that. I the figured catch. there yes, would be. <laughs> right? The second one is for example medical, mm -hmm. right? So instead of waiting for a major disease to come, mm -hmm. why can't you have an insurance policy okay. which basically allows you to then go to a doctor's and claim over that policy, all right? Using your, using benefits, your benefits at the NSSF, all okay. right? The third one is education, mm -hmm. right? We know that most of us, you accumulate enough money over time for your kids, but sometimes that bill might become big. Mm -hmm. Or even yourself, you might want to upgrade yourself and you might want NSF to help you to accumulate that so that you can pay out that using mm -hmm. either an insurance policy or even a direct payment. And the final one is unemployment benefit, mm -hmm. right? So you're out of employment for a couple of years, you've saved sufficiently enough mm -hmm. to maybe get you six months salary while you're looking for a new job and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So we've thought about some of those things, but the little catch is that that would be out of your voluntary contributions because we do not want you to expire your retirement benefit uh, in uh, for your short-term or your mid-term benefits. So, so it's not a di my discretion or my choice? It is your discretion. It will be your choice. It will absolutely be your choice. Because what the law says is that up to 30% of your income mm -hmm. will be allowed for tax purposes so that you can save for NSSF. Now, you know that the mandatory amount is 15%. 10% mm -hmm. by you. 5% by your employer, all right? So that is mandatory. That will around, continue yeah. to be, sorry, yeah, or the mm. other way around. That will continue to be mandatory mm -hmm. and that will always be for your retirement. So explain to us that, where you said that, that what's available is the voluntary Yeah, so what is available is that because the law allows you up to 30% of your yes. income to be saved towards your contribution, mm -hmm. the law is prescribing that the 15% will stay for retirement yes. and the other 15% will be for these other things that we're talking about. The emergencies that yes. might creep yes, up. Yes, okay. Absolutely. So so we've been talking about um your expanding your social security coverage and yes. the things that you you know yeah. you will so, put together yes. to help people understand better and to join yes. and to um, So we we believe that the tax incentives mm -hmm. the new products and the efficiencies we have been able to generate as a mm -hmm. fund, right, coming up with, you know, mobile money, being able to save with that, 
uh, coming up with a distribution network, yeah. we're able to sell to that. Coming up with apps that are really nice and good for, to update uh, our customers. And all the brand we've been able to build would convince our members to be able to come in and be recruited. Let's be honest, because a lot of questions that have come through online and even right here at NTV Po are saying, but how are you really going to convince the person in the informal sector who's been surviving anyway, thinking they're saving their own way, as you said, in their chicken, in their piece of land, in their farm, thinking this works for me? It's going to be through a process called financial literacy, right? <laughs> you need we've, to. We've, we've already begun on that. We, yeah. we, we know that, that financial literacy is definitely something that the fund needs to do. Uh, we, we, we do recognize that we have done, I believe, a reasonable job mm -hmm. uh, with the mandatory contributions. Uh, we think that our members uh, are good testimonies. I mean, we run the Friends with the Benefits. Mm -hmm. There's very good testimonies in there to show that if you save consistently, save for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and utilize your money very well, that you can really, really project yourself. Uh, I, I said this morning when I was addressing the press that the only way to create wealth is not through gambling, is not through try and error, it's through savings. That's how everybody who's done it the hard way has to do it through savings. And it's a painful process, but mm -hmm. I think that the benefits at the very end means that you are damn good at what you get to be done. You know, I've been looking at my NSSF contribution um, balance, and I, I think of the time I've been working, and it's, it, I think my retirement might not be 55, 60. Um, and so I need to understand this age and accessing my benefits. And maybe somebody who's watching was thinking, so you want me to access my money at 60 years, and that's when I'll get the benefits of the new uh, law that's being proposed. Mm. At 55 right now, if I'm 55, I can access my money. Mm. But I may not wait at 55. Uh, are there any other changes? So that's the age. Those are the changes. Mm -hmm. Those are the the alternative. The, the fifteen percent. The fifteen percent, which we which we call okay. It's called the voluntary contributions. Mm -hmm. As you the name suggests, mm -hmm. you will make that decision voluntarily. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle accent coming through. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 through your own volition, and then you will be able to then access those additional products. Okay, so um, is that what you meant by midterm access to yes, my book? Absolutely, absolutely. So the big, the other big worry is because you've said, okay, maybe you, you're creating products around health, education, any other way that you can make my life easy as a person who... But well, apart from giving you more products, apart from making sure that your investments, the money that you give us is invested and given, gives you a return, right? One of the best... Mm -hmm. um, things that I always like to share with, with, with members is that if you were saving a million shillings, right, and you did that for 30 years, mm -hmm. all right, and NSSF gave you 10%, right, you'd end up with a port of over 30 million shillings. Now, I can tell you that is equivalent to 50,000 shillings per month. Mm -hmm. 50,000 shillings per month, right? Now, I like to put this in... Um, terms of a beer. Hmm. All right, so I know some of our viewers might not understand what uh, a tasca is, but um, a tasca is one of the, well, ordinary beers that you can get out of there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go into a, a reasonable establishment, tascas are normally 5,000 shillings, okay? So that's 10 tascas, all right, which I'm sure, you, you know, if you're a good drinker, you'd probably drink in a couple of nights, mm -hmm. but some people will probably drink in one, one night, but those are the extremes. So imagine that you're giving up 10 beers or 20 sodas for those who would for like a the soft drinks. In 10 years. For a future in 10 <laughs> years of 300 million shillings. I think that is the power of compounded interest, right? Because what you'll have put in there is much, much less uh, in fact, I can I can work out what you'll have put in there. While the you're working 000. out, because I need to bring you the question of as much as I'd like the fact that you'd say I can, uh, towards my mortgage, my benefits can help towards my mortgage, hmm. there's the issue of government being able to borrow. Okay. So me. you'd have put in but about, me, about yes. 40 million shillings, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so 100 and almost 250 will have come through uh, from interest. So uh, you can imagine how much 
money that is. 47 million? 47 million, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so I was saying that government is going to be able to borrow from you. And then when I is asking, so why can't I? I get it. You've said that there'll be ideas of, you know, maybe you've got a mortgage and you want your benefits, your voluntary uh, part to actually help you towards that or improve. Well, why can't I? It, it feels like I can't have that much access to my money and we don't trust the government to have that much access to borrowing the money. Well, actually, you should have Is trust. government a good borrower? You you should, I, I said this this morning, uh, government is the best risk. I, I, in any, I saw you say in that. Any country. Do you believe yeah, that? Absolutely. Okay. In any country, government is the best risk. All right. If you are doing business with a gentleman on the street, any gentleman on the street, uh, even some of the most, the wealthiest uh, individuals on the streets but of Kampala. But it's still a risk anyway. Would, would, would you lend them money without taking security? Government, you, you would. You know why? Because government controls Uganda shillings, all right? Um, the guy in charge needs to call the guy in charge of the central bank and say, look, uh, can you please pay off NSSF? And uh, the guy at the central bank will say, fine, I have to. So, I don't think that's how it was. Oh, of course it doesn't was, work like yes. that. But, but, but <laughs> if it worked like that, I'd be worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but of, course, of course it doesn't work like but, that. So what, the what point you, I'm trying to yes. say is that because we lend government in local currency, mm -hmm. okay, being very serious, we lend the money to government in local currency. Government is, is the one that charge? prints mm -hmm. local currency, and therefore it can therefore not default on its local currency debt. If you look at all governments that have had difficulty, and by the way, there is very few, in fact, I can say there is almost no government that has ever failed to pay their debt. Uh, I know you will remind me of all the countries that, mm. whose debt has been forgiven, but it didn't mean that they were not able to pay. Of course, they would have taken longer to pay, mm -hmm. but they would have had to pay. But if you look at all governments, but they we don't failed. Want, we don't want such they patterns failed. on our benefits. No, no, but they failed to pay because of foreign currency debt, because they didn't have the foreign currency to pay. However, if it is local currency, they will print the money and pay you. So, so that means they have no risk at all? There's no risk. In fact, if you, uh, those who are involved in uh, investment always say that uh, you know, government has zero risk. If you look at, uh, at uh, our colleagues at the bank, all right, once they lend money to uh, government, it is zero rated. Uh, I don't know how many of us would be very comfortable to hear that. But let's talk about probably what's itching everybody. And we're going to allow people to have, you know, call-ins just to get their questions answered. Because yeah. um, I, I heard you say people were misunderstood it. Once mm. the headline popped up, everybody yes. thought you're taxing, taxing, taxing yes. everything. Yeah. Whereas you have an explanation of how it's going to work. Okay. And I think the biggest question we asked with one of my colleagues was, do I get more money at the end or less money or the same money? at the end. So let's go through that. Okay, so these are the numbers, okay? So let me start off with the beginning, yes. right? So um, we receive money from the employer yes. and the employee. The employee sends in 5%, 5%. the employer sends in 10%. 10%. Currently the employer, sorry, the employee, when they send in their 5%, that is taxed on their salary. Mm -hmm. In other words, they don't get a tax benefit for making that contribution, yes. right? The employer, however, gets a tax benefit because once they are submitting their return to the bank of, sorry, to the Uganda Revenue Authority, they deduct the expense of the pension contribution or the social security contribution, and therefore their income is less by that amount, and therefore they are assessed on an income tax rate of 30%, mm -hmm. I think for companies, uh, at the rate of minus the expenses they've made for their employees, okay? okay? So that is tax, tax free, taxed. It then comes into the fund. Yes. The fund we invest. When we invest, we get revenues or income. That income is taxed by the Uganda Revenue Authority mm -hmm. uh, and that is taxed on a gross basis. So most times we'll end up paying the withholding tax, which accounts for the final tax. Yeah. And then if so we, that part once affects we've what once we've removed our expenses, which are allowable, then whatever income remains is what you bring to me is is also no is is paid as as tax, but the revenue or the interest is then paid to the member into their account. Okay. Right. So the income that they receive in their account that you receive in your account every year when we declare interest is taxed mm -hmm. by the URA. 
However, at the time of exit, when you, I'm taking my when benefits. you're taking your money, you get that tax, tax free, free. Yes. right? So that is the current regime, which mm -hmm. is why we call it E exempt. Sorry, taxed. T T E. e. In other words, it's taxed, tax, tax, taxed, exempted. exempted. Yes. Right. So the regime that is being proposed within the law is E. In other words, exempt the salary of the individual. My five percent. Your five percent. Yes. Plus the employer's five percent. A ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah. Right. So that is all exempted by t for tax. Okay. The income that is now earned by NSSF that is then put on your account is also exempted, exempted tax-free. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to withdraw your money at the age of 55, mm -hmm. you will get a tax rate of 30 or 40 percent, depending on which tax income tax bracket you fall in, and that will be removed off your benefit. That's actually the total. Up in, yeah, that yes. ends up into your account. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. So let's just examine this a little bit, okay? Let's start off with the income that we make as NSSF mm -hmm. and how that becomes important. Okay. Last year, we gave an interest rate of 15%, uh, 15%, all yeah. right? We earned, and I can tell you this, about 18% gross, mm -hmm. all right? We removed expenses of about 1.2, and we removed tax, which was equivalent to about 1.8, which then brings the figure down to about... 15%, which is what we gave to our members. Yeah. If we had not paid tax mm -hmm. last year, I see where you're going. Right? <laughs> we would have given our members not 15%, but 16.8%, almost 17%. Okay. All right? So they would have had a bigger More. balance mm -hmm. at that stage. Okay? At the very end, the individual, and let's use a very simple example. Yes. All right? So the individual today, they have a salary of a million shillings, mm -hmm. which is average. Average, okay. The tax rate for and an individual, gross. yes, yes, a, a tax rate for an individual who earns thirty percent. Sorry, uh, one million shillings. One million shillings is thirty percent. Yes. So they will pay three hundred thousand. Yes. Three hundred thousand minus one million 700, is seven hundred thousand. Yes. Now, their NSSF is fifty thousand. So seven hundred thousand. They're now at six fifty thousand minus. NSSF would mean that in their car bank account, they will have got 650. Take home or net. Take home mm. into their bank, mm -hmm. right? So let's look at the new situation. Mm -hmm. New situation. So we start off with a million shillings. Yes. Salary has it changed. But this time, we've got to deduct the 50,000, which is due for NSSF, mm -hmm. before we charge an in, uh, a 30. tax mm -hmm. on uh, the the gross amount, mm -hmm. okay? So 1 million minus 50,000 is 950,000, mm -hmm. all right? So that is the new gross, which we now need to apply a 30% charge of tax on. Right. Right, so that 30% is equivalent to 285,000 shillings. Yeah. If you subtract 285,000 minus 950,000 shillings, mm -hmm. a gross, I mean a net, which goes into their bank account, has suddenly increased from 650,000 mm -hmm. to 665,000. So on day one, they have an increment in their net salary of 15,000. So that is extra money for the member at that stage because they are not paying tax on the element of NSSF that they pay in. So that's the first advantage. So you receive money today. Okay? The, the next amount of money you receive is what I've told you on the income on the income yes. that now you're going to get a bigger interest rate so at the very end now you've got to pay for your little sins that you that's where we're all paying yes, attention yes. because i'm ready i'm at 60 yes. or 55 yeah. now if you're at 55 you'll pay for your sins yes. because you're getting at 60 there. i don't at 60 you do not and the reason is very simple mm -hmm. we want to change behavior mm. right some more numbers that i would like to share with you yes the average payout today is about 15 million shillings. Of course, that number keeps increasing as people's salaries goes up and the longer they save because NSF was started 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So there are people who have been saving are coming off the, the whatever. Or of even the, depending on yeah, what they earn anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are seeing those numbers going up. Mm -hmm. So we think they will go up. But generally today, we are paying 15 million shillings. 15 million average. shillings okay. is not a whole lot of money. When you're retiring, it yes. really doesn't make sense. Exactly. Mm. So I think that 
in order to change behavior, in order to improve, you know, the culture of savings, saving. all right? We believe that if we ask people to hang in for another five years mm -hmm. and go at the age of 60, they will have made sufficient money, even if they do not contribute just through investment income, they will have made slightly more money. And at the age of 60, that means that they get their money net, sorry, Without, without, any tax. Tax. without any tax. All right. So I, I don't know if you've understood it because those who are asking, do I get more money, less money, or the same money? You definitely money? will get more money. <laughs> he says you'll definitely get, more, definitely money get more money at the end. Of course, yeah. uh, we know you might have your own personal questions to ask because maybe it's something you need clarity on. We're going to take a short break. We're on the spot with Richard Biarugaba, the NSSF Managing Director. You're still watching NTV tonight. Um, Flavio Tumsi Mekabura here sitting in for Patrick Kabara. It's on the spot. And I have Richard Biarugaba, the NSSF Managing Director, doing a great job of being, and what you said, you like being transparent, saying it as it is. So currently, I can get my money uh, through age if I'm 55. Mm -hmm. um, in validity, I mean, if physically or mentally, I'm not able to still bring in um, value. Um, I've, I'm moving to another country permanently. Uh, the other, I've now moved to working for government. Mm -hmm. um, survivors, maybe I'm, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so my survivors can take the money. Yeah. But you were explaining... And also the age of 50 if you're out of employment for a for year. For one year, yeah. yes. So you, you were explaining to me earlier how in in the new proposal there's, there's still these little exemptions yeah. or new changes. Okay, so the explanation for that is that for the age of 55... Yes you will be taxed, yes. all right, on your benefit. Uh, however, on, and also on the age of 50, of course, because you haven't got to the age of 60, 60 which, which yes. is where you get exempt, which you, where you seek the exemption. So you still receive your money? You receive your 55. money, but you'll receive it, uh, but you'll get it after it's been taxed. Taxed, yes. And you'll also receive your money at the age of 50 if you're out of employment for, one year. for at least one year. Mm. Okay, so that, that will still apply, okay. and, but you'll still, we will pay tax on that. However, if you are invalid or you are, you've got an invalidated benefit, mm -hmm. that will not be, you won't pay tax on that. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, also, if you are dead, uh, you will not, and, spouse, and your spouses children and children anyone? will not pay tax on that. Okay. All right. Uh, however, if you, you go to government before reaching the age of 60 mm -hmm. or you leave this country before the age of uh, 60, yes. you will pay tax on your immigration grant okay. or on your... Uh, in exempted employment. Mm -hmm. So the honest truth is that uh, a majority of our customers, about 60%, leave uh, the fund through AB, age benefit, okay. and also withdraw benefit. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that decision is well within their reach to be able to decide on whether to leave at the age of 55 or 60. Okay. Which would then mean that, in all honesty, if people do want not to pay the tax, then they can wait. Until 60. Until 60. Mm -hmm. In addition, if you add there the sick and the not-so-alive people, then that would probably put that number up to almost 80% of our members. Okay. So uh, there's a possibility that 80% of our membership could actually get their money without paying this tax. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it is a good, good opportunity for us to be able to save slightly more money uh, and also continue to enjoy our retirement because we'll have worked hard for it. Okay, so um, let's get clarity on that, how the expansion will be achieved. We're talking about getting the percentage of Ugandans who are not in, in the formal sector, who are the majority, by the way, mm -hmm. who are watching right now and thinking, how will they reach me? How will they get to me? Mm -hmm. I hear tax incentive, but how will that expansion be achieved? Well, I think I would say three reasons why people should save with us, because mm -hmm. that's basically, I'm doing my pitch You're now. pitching. I'm not pitching, <laughs> yes. I'm not pitching. So I think the first thing that they, people should think about is, um, on my own, am I able to save money uh, and maintain my plan to save for the next 30 years without anybody reminding me that I need to save? Mm -hmm. And to be quite frank, from the numbers I've seen, Ugandans were not good at that, all right? So approach us, 
-hmm. We will help you to force you to save for yourself because that's mm -hmm. what you're doing, right? Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we have great products that are coming up that will be able to deal with, with you. So mm -hmm. if you have an unfortunate incident, say sickness, if you have an unfortunate incident, say you need money for school fees, mm -hmm. if you have an unfortunate incident that you might not be able to have money when you are unemployed for a period, mm. then the best way to force yourself to save for that is by coming to the NSSF. Mm -hmm. The last one is really on the technology we've been able to deploy, mm -hmm. right? And I am proud to say that we're ready, right? There are 15 million Ugandans out there who are in the informal sector. We are ready to give them a good product, um, let them come, we'll have the technology, um, that will be able to deploy and give them that service and uh, they should be able to then uh, to have a great product D um, guaranteed by government of Uganda oh I was about to say that might not be a positive for okay you to maybe, say. maybe I shouldn't say but <laughs> uh, but, 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 but but at the back of their mind it, it is, is they it, know. Is, it is positive. so um I had the chairman of you know to being excited that you know that the board is now you know you've got employees employer mm. the voices of the people yeah get to the top so now. I mean, I said that um, NSSF has been here for about 30 years. Yes. And we have seen that uh, uh, one of the things that has always brought issues at the fund is governance, mm -hmm. right? Um, in the past, the minister had overwhelming power within the law to appoint anybody on the board. Including you. And to appoint the managing <laughs> director. Yeah. Anybody he wanted, mm -hmm. right? And he could literally, literally walk on the street and grab anybody so you. and tell him, go to NSSF and run it, right? What this law is doing, it's putting in a little bit of safeguards, mm -hmm. right? So the first thing is the board. Yes. The board will be a tripartite board, mm -hmm. right? It has been actually happening in practice, but this is now embedded within the law. Okay. So it will have three stakeholders. One, government. Mm -hmm. Uh, represented by the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Gender and Local and uh, whatever they call themselves, what they call themselves? Gender, Gender Labor, Labor and Social, and social Development. development. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's the, the second ministry. They have been trouble with my bosses for, right. for forgetting <laughs> their names. Okay, so the second uh, constituents uh, or the second stakeholder is the employer, right? Mm -hmm. The employers, uh, they're the ones who contribute the largest percentage of yeah. 10%. Mm -hmm. um, and they are they have a body called the Uganda F Federation of Uganda Employers. Yes. So they have now been mandated to nominate members on to this sit on that board. to sit on the board. Mm -hmm. All right. The third is the employees. The yes. employees represented by the unions. There are two unions uh, in the country, uh, NOTU and uh, COFTU. Mm -hmm. They too have been allocated uh, seats to be able to nominate people to mm -hmm. come in there. Now, if you look at all those three groups right? They have their own interests, yes. right? The workers would like their money protected. Mm -hmm. The employers would like their money protected. Government would like to protect the money. As Are well, you concerned right? that um, it's been working smoothly, as you would put it for now, and this It's been many working voices. smoothly, but without it being in black and white. So what the law is doing mm -hmm. is putting it in black and white so that in future, if I mean, we've had reasonable ministers of finance mm -hmm. uh, in charge of this process. If you get in uh, a minister who is n unreasonable, they can come in and do anything because it wasn't within the law. But oh, now nice. it's within the law, mm -hmm. right? The third thing is obviously the appointment of the managing director, the deputy managing director, and the corporation secretary. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that we've had issues with uh, some individuals who've been MDs, some individuals who've been deputy MDs, and we've seen some individuals who've had who've been corporation secretaries. What this policy is saying, it is saying that the board, mm -hmm. which is appointed by the minister, will have a role to play in the appointment of these senior individuals to okay. run the fund, All right. right? In the past, as I said, the minister could choose Anyone. a guy on the street and bring them on board. Is it right? a case of they have a choice or they vet whoever they is chosen? Or well, they, the regulator vets the individuals who have been chosen. Mm -hmm. So th there is that extra layer of process, yeah. of process that mm -hmm. helps. Um, so you, 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 you talked about income, the money, uh, how we get the interest. Obviously, you invest mm -hmm. our money. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there might be a question of due diligence, and you, you, I might nudge you on the Tamangalo scandal. But I know. Look Tamangalo up. scandal <laughs> is in the past. 
it's, it's Angalo, isn't it back in the present? To, to, today, Temangalo is not an issue. All right. Parliament have somebody who has said that they owned the land in 1972, 73, or 71. Okay. It's a departed Asian. We bought the land in 2008. And, uh, with due diligence done. With due properly. diligence done. Okay. We've got the land title. We've got the markings on the ground. We've got physical possession of the land. We've uh, got uh, security deployed on the land. Mm -hmm. uh, in all intents and purposes, we have uh, a contractor who is going to begin construction on the land. All right. So when such matters come out to us, the public, um, yeah. there's. Uh, Things are misconstrued because the minute it gets to the public, opinions mm. are, are risen. Uh, is, aren't you aware of such matters when they're brewing underground? And then I am aware of that matter. It has been brewing for a yes. long time. Mm. It's been brewing since 1973, <laughs> I can tell you, uh, because that's when the lease expired on the land that was held by mm -hmm. the Asian family that is uh, claiming it mm -hmm. now. So that's when the lease expired, and it was re-entered by the individual who owned the um, mile land mm -hmm. uh, on, on it who was uh, a local guy who owned that piece of land. So uh, I, I believe that this matter has already actually come under scrutiny of the land the lands board. Land, lands commission, yeah. commission mm -hmm. um, uh, the Bamagame Maria Commission uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I believe that uh, once we present the, all the information to mm -hmm. the parliamentary committee they should be able to see that, uh, that we are in the right I think the worst that can be is that um, we we were we are bona fide owners. We paid for value. We got value. We've got ownership. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was. We just want to know. Maybe that there our was money a fraud. Maybe maybe there was a fraud in the past. But uh, you know, with land, uh, the guy who holds the piece of paper and owns the actual piece of land. Uh, owns the land. Means to an end. So yes. is, is our money safe? Investment plans? Well, okay. So at the moment we have 1.4 trillion shillings under custody uh, and assets under management. Uh, about 6% of that is held in real estate. Mm -hmm. It's actually the smallest, uh, 6%, smallest yeah. 6%, which is about uh, slightly over 600 billion shillings held in land, mm -hmm. buildings, and all the stuff that you see that we own, all right? We've got almost 2,000 acres of land in and around Kampala. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a couple of buildings in and around Kampala. We've got a couple of plots uh, in and around Uganda. Uh, we've built a couple of new properties in and around Uganda. And all that is equivalent to the value of uh, 600 billion shillings, mm -hmm. okay? So the return on that is in the region of between 3 and um, 10% depending on, 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 on the, where the area is and how much we've put in in terms of investment. Um, the next class of asset that we have is equities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about 17, 16, 17% 17 mm -hmm. uh, of that, uh, which is about 1 point something trillion shillings, 1.3, 1.4 trillion shillings, held in various entities. 80% mm -hmm. um, of that, of the uh, equities, is held in Kenya. Obviously, they have the largest stock exchange, yeah. and therefore we, we have the largest uh, investment there. So, you know, your blue chip companies, your Safaricoms of this world, KCB, Equity Bank, uh, are part of our portfolio. Uh, we've got another, uh, I would say, 20% uh, held in uh, Tanzania uh, on their stock exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, that is held in some of the blue chip companies there, Tanzanian breweries, yeah. um, and a couple of others. I know we have uh, some callers. Um, you will mention your name, of course, and your question or comment. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening to you. Yes, your name and your comment or question. Yes, my name is Tomisha Fred, and uh, this is my question. Yes, please. Thank you for the show. Well, thank we you appreciate it. Uh, uh, my question is, most uh, Servers. Most people who serve with NSSF are employees of different companies. And we've seen very many banks target them for loans. Is there a way how a member can borrow from his savings and that interest goes 
into the NSSF saving as a whole. Instead, you know, banks getting a lot of interest and, you know, develop themselves, yet the NSSF itself can develop. I think I'm clear. I don't know. Yes, yes you are, Fred. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we multiply our own money? <laughs> <laughs> if you voluntarily save with us, yes. you will be able to do that. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, this is the product we've been dying to give to our members okay. because every single time I am in touch with our members, they've told us, we go to the banks to borrow, right? Can't you give us our own money? And we and, uh, increase our own money. Yes. Yes, right. makes sense. So basically, uh, if you are able to voluntarily save, uh, the extra 15% that mm -hmm. I said, we shall be able to work out a product which basically enables you to either borrow your money or actually use your money to get a good rate from a bank. Okay, so let's make that clear. Currently, there's a 15%. 5% from me, 10% from my yes. employer. But I can... Now, the new, the, law, the, the new law... Yes. Oh, allows, the new law. ...will allow you... Now, it doesn't allow you. Yes. But now, the new law will allow you a voluntary contribution of an extra 15 percent and that will 30. be able to go to um, things like this one okay. in fact i would like to say that the situation is actually already good right mm. let me let's not get it uh, wrong mm -hmm. a lot of companies have what they call uh, in-house schemes yes where they actually send 15 percent okay so people are already doing it it's only that now they are sending it to an in-house scheme mm -hmm. right However, the in-house scheme does not provide you some of the benefits we think we will provide you. Mm -hmm. So the member will make that decision and decide that instead of sending it to an internal scheme, which is small and might have issues of capacity to give me these products, why don't I give it to a big scheme like NSSF hmm. so that that is then used to get these other products? All right. So the answer is yes, you can multiply your own money on the voluntary uh, side. side. Yeah. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening, hello. Yes, your name and your question or comment. My name is Alex. I'm calling from Bali. Yes, Alex. Yes. Uh, hello? Yes, we yes, can, we can hear, you. hear you, Alex. Yes, my name is Alex. I'm calling from Bali. Yes. I think that uh, our the director is trying to, to avoid the topic that is raising the major discussion. Um, the element of taxation of the benefits uh, at, at the time when a member is receiving is the major issue. And he has tried to brush it off. He talked about it very briefly and is not going into the details of exactly how that affects the member. All right. And the second issue is about the government having access to, to borrow the money from NSSF. I think the two major issues that are raising debate among members and the country is ma majorly those two issues. All the other benefits and the one they're talking about, about mortgage and the rest, and insurance and all those, those are all good, and that's, that is there. But the, 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 the fear is that these are simply being used to cover up the actual effect of what the law is trying to get into, the taxing of the bulk when a member is, is, is receiving that, that money at the payout. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm beginning to wonder whether this is an NSSF-sponsored bill or it's a government bill, because... The presentation this night is as if it's an NSF-sponsored bill, and yet what we know as members is that this is a government bill. And oh, from there, okay. there's a fear that NSSF and the government are majorly becoming one unit, and that is what is raising a major concern among beneficiaries and among contributors. I think that issue has to be addressed, and uh, the director should really present himself as a director of NSSF rather than the government that is presenting the bill to be debated in parliament. I think... For me, that's where my major concern is. You've been quite clear, Alex. Thank you. Alex, um, <laughs> I, I read you. I hear but you. I did ask you that. Yes, Are you I think, sure I think government is a good borrower? <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's, let's talk about taxation. Yes. Um, I would love to demonstrate to all Uganda that if we were to run the two scenarios, now and after, the amount of money you would receive as a saver increases, okay? So let me look at the numbers. Assume that you are going to get 
one million oh, shillings. Uh, hold that thought. Let me ask you first of all, the way it's been working, tax, tax, exempt, yes. which is what um, all of us savers have been used to. Yes. Were, they com were there complaints from the savers that this doesn't work? No, there were none. There were none. But the world has moved on. The rest of the world gives incentives to savers to save. That's what this is all about. This is giving you an incentive to save more money. That's why we are. That's the only reason, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the old system was very constrained. It was in a box. All you had to do is your fifteen percent. We will remove the tax. We will invest it. We will remove the tax. We will give it to you net. Okay. Today we are saying no. We will remove the tax when you contribute so that you can contribute more than just the 15%. You can contribute up to 30%. And if you contribute up to 30%, you'll get a huge tax incentive, all right? Then NSSF, please go and make money for your members without fear of how much tax you're going to pay. Go and do that. Now, once you have done that, you will then have a bigger pot to share between the member who is the final beneficiary and the taxman because the taxman still wants his tax okay the compromise is that at that stage you will have made so much money much more than you would have ordinarily made assuming that we had kept the old system and therefore giving you an opportunity to save even more by incre increasing that 15 percent so that's really the that's the logic behind it is it just making more money for me as a saver or it is making more, more money, money for you, you are in, everybody else. I mean, no, 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 no. The NSSF, NSSF hands over the money all to the member. Mm -hmm. So we don't keep any money. NSSF, all the money that is invested is paid to you back. I, I gave you the example of what happened last year, all right? Yes, you did. 18 percent, 1.2 percent given to expenses, 1.8 percent given to the taxman. 15% given to the member. So here's how it is, because he asked two questions. One, you wanted to understand the taxes, which I guess yes. you're explaining, and yes. you wanted to explain something different there. But also, that question of government can borrow. Yes. I think let's first finish the issue of taxation. Let's. All right? I think it is important that we become transparent on this. Okay? I, as a member, because I'm a member, I mm -hmm. save with NSSF, all right? But my, all, or everybody who else who says, what would you want out of this change, right? You would prefer that you get more money, still investing the same amount of money, but you get more money out of it than you would have ordinarily have got if there was an old system. That's exactly what you'd want. Unless if you want to say, let's go back to the old system, right? Which basically means that they will tax you, they will tax NSSF, and then you get your, your benefit gro uh, net, but you'll get a smaller benefit. What, right? per what percentage of my benefits when I'm taking them out at six, uh, 50, mm -hmm. 55, mm -hmm. what percentage of that total is mm -hmm. being um, taxed? Or is it an accrued amount of well, money? Well, it, it will be the tax rate that will be the applying uh, in the income tax rate. Uh, so if it time. is 30% or 30% or 40%, okay. what, whatever the rate is today. So that, that's not changing. Mm -hmm. Th that is a constant. In fact, in all these assumptions, mm -hmm. uh, if we made, held everything constant, held the salary at a million shillings, mm -hmm. held the 30% mm -hmm. uh, uh, tax rate now, uh, held the 10% interest received from NSSF uh, as it is, and held 12% of the interest that we receive from our investments, right? If I had that 1 million shillings for 30 years in the current system, I will receive a lump sum of 300 million shillings, mm -hmm. and the URA will get 67 of million shillings. Of the 300 shillings. million shillings. Well, it, uh, through the process, through mm -hmm. my investments, mm -hmm. and through what, uh, what they will have removed from your salary in terms of taxation. Uh, before you get that deeper into today. that, let's, let's probably answer someone's question who's worried that today currently they have, let's say, 100 million shillings yes. that they've accumulated yeah. over their working time. They're mm. still working, mm. so they're not yet at that point when they need to retire. Mm. Once this is through and you start the new scheme, yes. my okay. money is safe. Okay, the money my, will be safe. Definitely, <laughs> the money will not safe. be task, taxed again, mm -hmm. right? So... For practical purposes, this mm -hmm. is what will happen. As soon as the new rules come into place, yes. we will close the old scheme. 
with whatever money with whatever money I is have. there so whatever money you've got there plus the interest that has accrued will be paid into your account and held into that account okay we will then open a new account in your names right and that will start observing the new rules mm -hmm. now the new rules will be that by the time you pay in your salary it will not be taxed by the time we invest our money it won't be it taxed. won't be taxed by the time you get your money it will be taxed based on uh, the tax rate ruling at that at time, time assuming you get it at the age of 55 however if you wait until the age of 60 As you'll is. get that tax free okay. but your the funds that you held in port number one i'll get them you'll get that one without any tax because okay. the rules will not the new rules will not have go back on the old scheme they'll just work forwards i i, I can hear but but callers all are right burning. so Hello? so this so the second one the second i i think i need to give the figures all right mm -hmm. so if i as made the same assumptions right mm -hmm. in the new tax tax uh, dispensation yeah. same assumptions the figure would be you would get into your account 368 million shillings so it's gone up by 68 million shillings the ura would move uh from 67 to 144 so ura would also get a bigger pay but mm -hmm. also you would get a bigger pay mm -hmm. so your amount that you get in your fund which is what you should be interested in is moving from 300 to 368 and the reason is simple it is because you are having a bigger compounded interest than ordinarily and therefore the tax person will get off a chunk and you will also get off a chunk. Yes, hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Uh, yes, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Please be clear your name and your question or comment. Yeah, my name is Justin. Justin, yes. I'm more a contributor to NSSF. Mine is on voluntary Contribution. Yes, please. The M that talked about to salary, salary. The staff of NSS have been moving around encouraging people to voluntarily contribute. Yes. I want to find out to our faith. What is our faith <laughs> on the voluntary contrib contributors? Secondly, the issue of uh, what what happened to the old system, the old method of payment. Did, you, did the NSSF or the parliament contact or consult the workers before you came up with the bill? Okay. Please. We That's a very good question. All right, thank you. Which is, I think, what I asked. Very that good what question, was wrong right? with the old system? So let's first look at the fate of voluntary thank contributors. You. That's a very good question. Thank you so much. The fate of the voluntary contributors will not change mm -hmm. at all. In fact, what will happen is that we will pack your money that you're currently contributing in the old scheme and you'll get that ne uh, without any taxation of course when you go into the new scheme uh, the new rules will begin to apply okay and those rules will be that you will not receive uh, you'll not be taxed on your income you will not be taxed uh, on the revenues but you'll be taxed on the amount that you finally get uh, with regard to the uh, the old method uh, did we consult workers Yes, we did consult workers. Uh, this has been a consultative process which has been going on for a very long time. This process started in 2011. We consulted workers representatives. We consulted uh, uh, all the stakeholders that are involved with the NSSF. Uh, and of course, we consulted the practitioners, which is NSSF ourselves. And we've therefore been able to build all this feedback in there. Now, um, I don't think that people should get upset or worried that the decision has already been made about this law. Well, someone said, is this an SSF sponsored no, or it's not. government it's, sponsored? It's absolutely not. It's mm -hmm. a government policy because that's government is the one that sets up policy. We just implement, right? So, but we've got to explain why the policy has been set out, all right? The, 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 the issues that were raised uh, is expansion. We need coverage. We need more people in there. We need more products. We need midterm access. So those are the principles. Mm -hmm. How you implement them is some of the things that we are now talking about. But as I said, it is not a closed case. This is just a bill, right? It was read in Parliament and it was sent to a committee. The committee of Parliament that is responsible for this bill is going to go out to the public. So anybody can go in there and give their views and have the parliamentarians change their minds about some of these things that are being put there. So this is not cast in stone. Yes. But obviously, we believe that some of the things that have been put in here are very good for us because as I gave the history, 1986, 2000 and 
19 is a long, long time. A lot of things have we changed. We have some thoughts. Hello? Yes, hello? Good evening. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, your name and your comment this or is question. This from uh, Namugongo. Sorry? Uh, so what was your name? My, mine is very simple. Where is the 10%? Why should I be... Sorry? Where is the 10%? Back from Namugongo. My, my question is, why should they, why should, currently now 10%, yes. currently 10% is contributed by employer. Yes. Why should be the ones to pay the taxes for the 10%? Yet, yet currently, the 10% is the employer who incurs all the costs. But now when you are paying me my benefits, you have to tax the 10%, which is not part of my 5%, which I've been contributing. I need that clarification. Okay, so I think he says 10% is given by the employer and 5% by him. So yeah. at the point of benefits, he'd like that separated. He was wondering why you're still going to tax the 10%. Is, is that what he, I think that's what he asked. Yeah, I think that is an issue which um, the tax authorities have to beg. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way the bill has been uh, written today, mm -hmm. uh, the 10% is going to be taxed um, as part of the equation. So if the revenue authority thinks that the 10% should also be exempted because it had originally been exempted, then that will be written within the law and mm -hmm. we can isolate it. So I, th I think that's a matter of discussion which, which, which um, the member uh, can put to the members of parliament All so right. that they, they consider whether that's something they would like to do. Yes, hello. Hello. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, please, your name and your comment or question. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Aaron. Aaron, yes. Yeah, um, what, I, what I see, uh, thank you so much, um, NSFMD. Thanks, Aaron. What I'm asking is, um, wouldn't it be healthy to liberalize the uh, scheme? I believe that monopolizing it will not allow, um, will not help us benefit as savers. But if I liberalize with, uh, and we bring in competition, I believe we'll have better policies for the savers and be able to access our money in a better way. Because we feel that, you know, um, all the policies that are coming in, they are not in favor of those that are saving their money. And besides, uh, you understand the environment within Uganda that sometimes one can fall out of employment for over, let's say, four years or five years, depending, and they're not saving money. Why wouldn't we come up with po such policies whereby if somebody's been out of employment for about four years, they can access a, par a percentage of their money uh, which is taxed? At least maybe you, you would give room to access money and a taxation where somebody is constrained for a certain period out of employment. Okay. But not at 60 years. 60 years really doesn't make a lot of sense to save us. That's why uh, a lot of people are not in agreement to that, po that policy. Thank you. Aaron, um, well, a very good observation. Uh, let's first deal with the liberalization of the pension sector. Mm -hmm. I think that's a discussion that was held for quite a while. I recall that uh, as part of the enactment of the regulator, that was a huge discussion. Uh, the reasons why there was going to be a liberalization was there. Uh, at the time, NSF had its own issues. The sector was not growing. The sector was unsafe. Uh, we had all those scandals and that sort of thing. Um, a couple of years later, the sector has improved. Government looked at the, at the sector and decided that uh, it was not uh, a good decision to liberalize it. Because let me tell you, one, um, one piece of, of, of data that you might need to look at. Uh, if you look at the Chilean model, Chile is one of the countries that liberalized pensions in the 80s and 90s uh, and was hailed by the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and all those international agencies as a model of liberalization. Um, a couple of years later, the whole model has, um, first of all, they created, uh, I think, six or seven uh, competitors. Um, 
they basically sub, uh, ravaged the, the industry. They, um, they spent so much money on advertising. They spent so much money on, um, on uh, trying to get customers. They spent so much money on cutting each other on prices because that's what competition does. Uh, and at the end of the day, all those schemes became unviable again. Because in uh, pensions, it is very, very, uh, it's a very prudent business. You do not take a huge amount of risk because these are uh, pensioners' money. You do not want to be able, you, you cannot do the things that banks do. For example, you can't lend, that's why you can't lend pension, uh, pension money. Um, the, the law doesn't allow us to lend pensioners money because uh, uh, writing uh, loan assets is very expensive. So it is a prudent business and therefore the margins that are made out of pension for the owners of these pension funds uh, would be very, very small. And if you really put a lot of pressure on them, then they would actually disrupt the industry. That's why in places like Chile they are unfolding all those and government is actually coming back into pension. So that's why it's important that... Um, at the moment, the government believes that it would be in their best interest that the scheme of government continues to, prov to be the national uh, basic scheme uh, that has the uh, undertaking and protection of the government and that it provides the services given that it has improved significantly. Of course, if NSSF becomes terrible in its uh, implementation, there would be a change. The 60 other years is a lot, so they're saying that... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I totally understand. 60 years is a lot, but what I have said is that this law will allow you, Aaron, to create another account where you can borrow from, where you can withdraw from, should you be out of employment. So, please allow this law to go through, because that's the law that will allow you as a member to borrow your own money out of pensions. Yes, but you're not borrowing from the other 15%. You're not, you are not, you're just not to borrowing for the 15%. Yes, yes. Before we yes. get another call yeah, yeah. Be, the same Because thing. retirement is the purpose of NSSF. So we must make sure that the sacred cow called retirement is taken care of. Because that's the reason why we have this pot of money. And if you remember the numbers, only 10% of our, of our members have another source of saving apart from NSSF. So we are not good at it anyway. So government has decided that... But it should be at my discretion whether it, I'm good at it or not. It, it should be, but guess what? If you are not good at it, who will you burden? Government. In your old age, if you are not able to look after yourself, government, you'll fall back on government. So that's why government wants yeah. to make sure that you have enough savings to look after yourself in I, retirement. I don't want us to wrap without most of the thoughts coming out. Hello? Hello? Hello. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you'll be a bit louder. Your name and your comment, please. Yes, I'm Jover. Sorry. I'm Jover. Yes. Jover. Um, yes, I'm asking Mr. Wiyagawa. Yes. Who is his boss? Is it Mr. Mseveni or <laughs> the servers of the NSSF money? And if so, why don't they first ask we the servers? the things they must do to us before going again to government because you are the one saving money not the government and even why don't they think of this thing of building houses for people saving in money such that they may be they are deducted because people are dying even when their money is there but they are not using it thank you yeah very good question Jovat. um my boss is uh, the board of directors of nssf my boss happens to be the chairman of the board uh, who reports into the Minister of Finance. I think you know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> I think you really know well, what he meant. Well, he asked meant. the question. I've got to answer it. <laughs> so that's, to help him out. So that's my boss. Uh, <laughs> Are you working in the interest of government or secondly, the people secondly, of Uganda? Secondly, <laughs> yes. my job, uh, mm -hmm. I know that officially I'm called the managing director. Yes. Actually, my official jo title is managing trustee. I am a trustee on behalf of the 25 million members so my role as the managing trustee because the other trustees mm -hmm. but i'm the managing trustee is to ensure that their money is safe and i think if the public is to really see what i have done i have contributed to the fund over the last eight nine years that have been at the fund mm -hmm. they will have noticed that i really care about the members okay so i think there is no doubt that i do care about that secondly the issue of getting the views of the members for the nth time please give us those views that's the reason why i'm on tv i would be 
deep in my sleep now. I think the right? question isn't we can we can give the views. I think they're saying why give the views now when a bill is already um, tabled already. Because did you did you understand the needs of those that you are trustee? Yes. To? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We we started off with the uh, what you'd call the principles, all right? We then came to how do we implement those principles? Mm -hmm. How do we improve this, the, the scheme? How do we improve the benefits to our members? How do we improve the things that our members have been telling us? Because this is not out of our own evaluation. We are, the one, we are not the ones who talked about the, the benefits. The benefits have been brought to us by, as you've seen in the, in the, in the phone, uh, the phone calls that we've been receiving, everybody's talking about housing, everybody's talking about medical, everybody's talking about withdrawing some money before they become old. And we've listened to that. That's why we're responding with this bill. So I don't think it is fair to say that this, has, this bill has come out of nothing. It has come out of our, you know, the feedback we've got. As for the houses, we are building these houses and we would like our members to buy them and would like our members to buy them with the money that they've saved with us. And this bill is, this bill is going to allow our members to do exactly that. At a lower... At a lower rate, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm, of course. Um, if, if, as we wind up, if we forget anything, what shouldn't we forget about this new bill? Well, what I believe is that this... Uh, I have received great reviews from my colleagues and friends abroad who know how the advanced schemes work. Uh, and uh, the, the main theme has been these reforms are major. These reforms are what the pension scheme uh, sector requires. And I believe that if we can deliver these reforms, we will have changed the pension in Uganda forever. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Richard Berigaba, the Managing Director of NSSF. That's it for On the Spot. Good night.